you were a kid in the 90s and anything like me, you probably spent a lot of your time on one of these. And right up there with game genres I spent a lot of time on were RTS games on the Windows 95 PC. The two I have really fond memories of playing were Command and Conquer and Zed. I greatly enjoyed the combination of building up your troops, capturing territories and discovering new areas of the map while worrying where the enemy was going to come from. So end of August I decided to start up a new project, a game based on something I not only enjoyed playing but had an end goal in mind or at least an idea of the start and finish line. I decided to make an RTS game similar to Zed and Command and Conquer with some unique aspects. So the first step was to come up with a name and create the project in Unity. My idea was this, you play as advanced robot mercenaries, effectively guns for hire, who get recruited to rid different planets of raiders that steal resources, occupy land and spread corruption. Oh real original, like kinda like Zed, you're literally, you're making, re you're remaking Zed. You're, you're dude. The game is definitely going to be a nod to Zed in many ways, in that they also had robots, you will also focus on capturing territories and destroying the enemy base. However, my goal is to have varying enemies with different abilities, different types of troops with a level up system that changes and improves each type of troop or soldier. More variety of vehicles, giving the player options in how to tackle each level, a black market where those mercenaries can improve their arsenal. I also like the idea of Zed where the robots arrived on different planets in spaceships and thought what if we could actually traverse space and select different planets to tackle. So my idea will be to have varying levels in the form of planets that you could travel to with your spaceship, introducing a whole different game mechanic along Alongside the RTS where you would come across different villains and take them on in spaceship battles with a similar upgrade system for your ship offering the player a different gameplay experience. I'm conscious there's a lot here and with all this in mind I had to break everything down into the first simple steps and that was to make my first mercenary that the player would use and the environment for the first level. For the environment I used Unity's terrain tool to make a sort of canyon desert to be your first level. I used the same water shader that I made in my Pokemon TCG remake, feel free to check out that video by the way, as well as some textures to paint the desert that I got from the Unity assets Store. For the vegetation I also had some cacti from the Pokemon project that I felt were fitting for this level, as well as some of the trees. I downloaded the vegetation engine from the Unity Asset Store to simulate the wind. For the models I made the decision to use Magicka Voxel for the buildings and vehicles to give the game a bit of a retro old school feeling while using Blender for the characters and weapons but I may play around with this depending on how the game pans out. Once I had a rough level ready, I drew out our robot mercenary on some paper and imported it into Blender. Using some simple cubes and our trusty mirror modifier, I made a simple box character design which I smoothed out. For the rig, I used Mixamo to get our character up and running relatively quickly. I then imported our character into Unity, set up a simple blend tree for his animations and put together a simple movement script. The movement script uses our mouse click on screen to select the destination and Unity's Navmesh agents to move the player. I also made a simple camera control which has the camera as a child of an empty game object that is used for the movement, with the rotation being only on the camera. Now since the purpose of this game will be to command your squads to capture and defend territories, I wanted to make it easy for the player to move squads across the map. Next, I updated the player movement system so we can select multiple mercenaries and move them to our destination. In summary, how this worked was that you had a central player controller script that would use Arraycast to register a point on the map. It would then pass that to our movement script which basically says we are moving and not fighting and forwards that target position to a a separate script which we call nav mesh agent tracker that well tracks our troops more specifically it is used to identify which of our troops is currently selected using a bool value and for each loop method and if they are selected it would finally call our move to function back in our movement script which uses unity's nav mesh agent again to set the target destination for each selected troop bro you're my you're my spot no you're my spot bro <laughs> i believe i was standing here don't make me shoot you. Well, oops, I believe I just accidentally dropped a live grenade. And after the usual bug testing, it finally works quite well. With the ability to move our squads around, we needed somewhere to move them to, so the next step was to create some territories for the mercenary to be able to capture. If you recall, a core aspect of most RTS games is to have factories or training camps where you can increase your number of troops, and that is actually going to play a big part of the strategy for our game as well. So I made this soldier factory in Magicka Voxel with three different designs, one which is an uncaptured factory, one which is the player captured factory, and one which is the enemy captured factory. I also made a simple flag in Blender and added Unity's cloth component to make the flags look a bit more realistic and I quite like how they came out. And this would effectively be our first territory. How the system works is like this, each flag would represent a territory and as such we have a territory capture system script on every flag to track items like who has captured the territory, 
Wow, what a fantastic explanation, well done. If it is the player, we would swap out the uncaptured factory mesh for the player factory, change the flag to green and perhaps play a sound effect. I also make use of lists to track how many troops are currently in each territory as this feeds into our enemy AI, which we'll come to shortly. I wrote the script so that it not only swaps out the factory that produces the troops, but any facilities or buildings that sit within a range of the flag if it gets captured. I achieved this using the physics.spherecastall method, which basically casts a sphere in a specific direction and detects if anything hits that sphere. Once the territory is captured, I made a separate script called the troop spawn system. This script sits on the factory and it begins instantiating troops based on a bull value from the territory capture system and enum values which set the territory as either player or enemy captured. If the territory is player captured, for example, then the factory would spawn the player mercenary prefab and vice versa. The spawn system was also based on a timer which can be adjusted in the inspector. And you know, I was quite happy with the result. Just when you think you know how to code, you don't. And eventually I was quite happy with the result. Now capturing territories is great fun, but not very challenging without an enemy. So the next step was to model our enemy troop. I did this by using the player model we had already made in Blender and playing around with it until I was happy. I thought the skull icon would be a nice way to mark anything that the enemy had captured and added it to the soldiers as well. I might even add it to the flags moving forward. I wanted the enemies to be able to capture territories in a logical order whilst also defending its position. So I made an enemy AI script which basically holds a number of different states that an enemy can be in. These are the capture state where I want the enemy to go out and capture a territory, the defense state where the enemy would stay in the current territory they occupy and patrol the area, a spawn state where after spawning the enemy would run effectively out of the factory, and an attack state to attack the player if they are within a certain radius. Without going into every detail of the script, the core logic in terms of whether an enemy went to capture a new territory or stayed and defended the existing one was based off of calculating the nearest territory. I achieved this by placing all of the territories into a list and created a closest distance to territory variable which was set to matf.infinity. And using a for each loop, we would check if the distance between the enemy and the current territory was less than the distance to territory variable. If it was, then we would set this to be the new closest distance and set the destination of the enemy to be the closest territory. Now I mentioned earlier that we were using the territory spawn system script to track how many troops were in each territory. So I set a condition to check if we had a certain number of troops in the territory. If we did hit that limit, then any troops which spawned over that number would be sent to capture a new territory by setting their state to capture territory. The remainder would continue patrolling the current territory in the defense state. It took me a good bit of tweaking and testing, but I'm quite happy with the behavior. If you leave the enemy, they will keep spawning and set out to look for new territories until they are all captured. I also made it so that if either the player or enemy enter a territory that has already been captured by either the player or enemy, the territory cannot be captured until all enemy or player mercenaries are defeated. So we've covered movement for both the player and enemy, but what about combat? To start, I modeled a rifle in Blender and added some shooting animations for Mixamo. I then created a fighter script which is used for both the enemy and the player. It basically assigns a target for the player or enemy to move towards and if either are in range calls attack behavior. This function is responsible for making sure that both the player and enemy are correctly rotated towards each other. It also has a timer for calling the shooting animation which you can change in the inspector. For the shooting I use what we call an animation event so that when the troops lift up their rifles after calling attack behavior the animation event fire would get triggered. This basically instantiates the bullet and moves it towards the player using transform.translate. Now there are plenty of other ways I could have set this up, I typically do use raycast but wanted to try out this approach. We turned the bullet into a prefab and for hit detection we had a separate projectile script on the bullet prefab that uses on collision enter to detect whether it hit either the player or enemy by checking the tags. I did however come across a problem of friendly fire when large groups of player troops and enemy troops were shooting at each other. To fix this I added tags to the instantiated bullet prefabs based on the player or enemy tags. To call the fighter script for the enemy I simply call the attack state if the player is in range and for the player we have a separate function in the player controller which checks if the player has been selected first before checking if we selected the enemy to attack via a raycast. I also added a separate health script using for both the player and enemy as well as some animations for when the player or enemy was defeated. So far the combat was working well but we didn't really have any player feedback to show we have definitely selected a player or how much health we had or the enemy had. For this I set up a health bar using a slider in world space with a troop UI script. I thought it would be good to be able to see how much health troops had so we know when to call in reinforcements for example. I added smooth movement of the health bar using matf.lerp to match the image fill amount to the current health of the troops sitting in our health script. I also added some sound effects for the shooting and this muzzle flash using a combination of Unity's VFX graph 
Photoshop and Blender following a great tutorial from Gabrielle. For player selection, I made this donut ring in Blender and created a shader for it using Shader Graph. The selection ring would be a game object on the player that would be set active depending on whether or not the player selected that particular troop. Having set everything up for combat, this was the end result. Once I had some working combat set up, I wanted to further develop the gameplay and the next item on the list were vehicles. I was able to create this vehicle in Magicka Voxel and import it and set it up in Unity. However, I had one big problem. I had actually never made a car game or worked on vehicle physics before. Initially, I was thinking about continuing to use the Navish agent to move vehicles as well as the troops, but I couldn't find a way to get good vehicle behavior using this method. Eventually, I stumbled upon a fantastic tutorial by iImaginary, where he shows you how to set up a car using Unity's wheel color component. My mind was actually blown here because I didn't even realize we had wheel colliders. That just made everything so much more simple. And when I discovered how it works, it quickly became the perfect resolution. Following these tutorials, I was able to replicate a troop vehicle that had the correct behavior. In a nutshell, how it works is I added four wheel colliders to the four wheels of the vehicle. There is a core script which is called Vehicle Engine. This is responsible for adding torque to the wheels using the wheel collider component, which causes the vehicle to move forward. And there's a bit of mathematics required to calculate the steer angle based on the target position. To achieve this, you need to calculate the relative vector based on the target position and divide its x coordinates by its magnitude, which is effectively its length, multiplied by the max steer angle. I haven't a clue what I'm talking about. Apart from that, I had two big challenges which took a bit of tweaking to get work. The first was to get the wheel behavior right because I had some problems simply rotating the wheels. Eventually, I just realized it was due to the rotations I had on all the objects. I feel really stupid. And the second was avoiding obstacles. For obstacle avoidance, we cast five rays along the front of the vehicle, which would apply a steer angle either left or right of the vehicle, depending on which ray was triggered. We did again have some issues when, for example, all the rays were triggered if the obstacle was quite big and in front of the vehicle. but I managed to get it working eventually and in the end I'm quite happy with the outcome. If you want to learn more about how this process works, I highly recommend checking out iImaginary's videos and I'll leave a link to those in the description below. Now, I had to integrate this vehicle movement into my enemy AI script. So what I did is I created a check territory distance function where we can set the territory based on the territory capture state so we can simply pass in that target destination. I also set up a check to set the motor torque to zero and gradually slow down the velocity of the vehicle as we get close to our destination. Still a bit of tweaking probably required, but I'm very happy with where we've gotten to considering I had no clue how to set up the vehicles. Lastly, you may have seen that I also created some player and enemy bases. The end goal of each level, similarly to Zed and most RTS games, is to capture and destroy the player or enemy base. For the enemy, I've set it up so that only after all territories are captured, or if in range of the player base, will they attack and destroy the player base. However, we can't just leave the bases undefended, so we created a turret in Magicka Voxel and tweaked it in Blender. I have it set up so that only the turret gun rotates on the X and y-axis so that it fully tracks and shoots at the troops within a specified distance. However, the troop and remainder of the turret only rotated on the y-axis for horizontal rotation. How I achieve this is by getting the direction between the target and the turret and placing it into quaternion.look rotation in order to get the correct rotation and then using slurp to smoothly move towards the target. I set up the shooting mechanic similarly to the troops. However, I had one slight problem. So far, the troops are only able to rotate horizontally. They can't rotate up or down to aim at the targets. I thought that adding vertical rotation can really give the player more possibilities in terms of how to approach territories where there's a slope advantage or disadvantage. Thankfully though, I did have experience setting up avatar masks for my sci-fi FPS game, so I took a similar approach. I made five animations in Blender for aiming the rifle at a 0, 45, and 90 degree angle, including the negative angles. I set up the avatar mask to only control the upper part of the troops, but I I did have a problem trying to figure out how to set up the aim. Originally I tried to simply pass the angle based on our rotation in the fighter script by accessing the Euler angle on Y and I did feel quite smart and thought this worked but the angle was inconsistent depending on the position of the troop. In the end I decided to calculate the height difference between the target and the troop and match that to a float value between negative 25 and 25 in our blend tree for aiming. The reason I picked these numbers is because it was the highest point of an object in our map and you could tweak these around, they're not really set in stone. This worked well if you were close to the target, however the angle stayed the same even if we were further away. To correct this I added a height and distance check which would divide the height difference value being used as the float parameter in our blend tree by a certain amount to lower our aim the further the troop was away from the target. I'm not happy with the aiming just yet, 
because I think there's a better way to achieve this using perhaps quaternion.angle axis, but something for me to work on going forward. All in all, I probably spent about two months working on this RTS game because there were a few weeks I had to write off just due to how busy it was in work. I'm very excited about working on this project and I've even started the process of setting up a Steam page by paying that hefty $100 to hold myself accountable to completing this game. So if this is a game that you'd like to see developed, then I will be releasing the Steam page once it's ready, so I appreciate anybody who supports it by wishlisting it. In the meantime, if you'd like to contribute to the development of this game and any future videos or content that I create, feel free to become a patron member. And as a show of thanks, I do have a particular tier that if you join, you will get a free copy of the game, because I really do want to give back to anyone who supports me on this project. If you enjoyed the video and want to follow the progress of this game, as well as my random game remakes like the Pokemon TCG game for the Game Boy Color that I remade a couple of months ago, feel free to drop a sub and like the video. I greatly appreciate anyone who does. As always, drink some coffee, code, and I'll catch you all in the next video.